quick. First of all, I want to uh, congratulate Marcus and uh, Susanna. <laughs> At, I've known Marcus probably seven years, eight years, and I've never seen him more complete. Um, he's he's already a great guy, and as sh I'm sure as all of you feel, he's probably your closest friend, one of the most genuine people you can know. Will do anything for everybody here, and um, you're lucky to have him, Susanna, and he will do anything for you for the rest of y'all's life. I want to say what's up to that skeleton man, and uh, um, there's nothing for me to say except that we love Susanna and Marcus. We love them so much. Um, this time has come. It's been a long time coming, and uh, hey, okay, Willie, get in there. Now I'm just kidding. Anyways. Um, no, we love them. Okay. Well, we want to see Marcus and Sin give each other a kiss right now. So everybody, cheers to the bride and groom. Uh, we love them. Hi, everyone. So. My name is Well, I'm Taylor. I guess I was the surprise. But... The, um, the first time I met Susanna, I just knew, obviously, like, we instantly connected. I knew it was definitely going to be part of my family. And for talking about Marcus, as you heard how awesome he is, he decided to, Monday, ask me if he could pay for me to fly me out to come and surprise my parents. Which, I mean, what other uncle would do that? That is just amazing. He just is so selfless and just is amazing. And I'm just so happy to have these two people in my life. And y'all are definitely meant to be together. So I'm happy, really happy for y'all. Yeah, uh, I'm sure as you all are aware, you know, Marcos is my good friend. Uh, from the very first time I met Marcus, he was uh, at the gym, you know, ballet fitness. You know, uh, <laughs> Marcus was doing something that I really couldn't, you know, I mean, comprehend what it's all about. So I approached him and said, hey, dude, what are you doing? He said, well, I have a personal trainer. I said, well, I don't think that personal trainer is showing you the good thing, you know, the right form. <laughs> So, you know, I took my course in my wing and, uh, you know, started working him out and, uh, you know, from uh, almost uh, 300 pounds to, you know, what he is right now. <laughs> and uh, as far as uh, Susanna goes, she was so scared of me at the gym because she said, you know, I'm very upfront, you no know, tights. I mean, I don't laugh, I don't, you know, talk with anybody I'm just you know up to what I want to do I said well you know then she didn't know me she haven't spoken with me so she was just assuming you know this who I am until she came closer get to know me and found out that you know I'm just one big teddy bear you know <laughs> so, <laughs> I've said all this to say this uh, Marcus you are more than a brother you know I cannot, you no know, words cannot, I you know, uh, express what I feel about you. You know, uh, you've been there in my thick and thin, you know. I mean, you've rendered the most help I can ever ask for, more than what a brother can give, you know. I appreciate you with, you know, everything I have. And Susanna, come into your life, I mean, what a couple you can, you know, ever want to have, you know. She's sweet, she's a darling. I mean, she's all you can ask for. So with both of you being together, I mean, the sky's the limit. So, good job. My girl told me not to cuss. Man, fuck. Shit. My name is 50 and I'm an alcoholic. Now I'm bullshitting. Right? <laughs> I don't know, uh, Marcus and Susanna. I think I'm probably about Marcus' oldest friend here. 
And actually, we like brothers. Susanna is like my sister. You know, if you guys don't know, I probably I lost my life April 26th, and they was right there, they, right there with me the whole time. Can you guys hear me? Marcus and Susanna, though, my, I love you guys. I just want you to know, there's, I don't know, uh, most of the time when I talk to Marcus, it's about our relationships. I just want you to know, guy, you screwed up. Now I got to get married. <laughs> you making it hard on me, Marcus. <laughs> I was trying to hold off another year, dude. I don't know, boy. Y'all the best friends that anybody could ever have. I don't know. And I love you guys, and uh, we got a lot ahead of us. You know what I mean? Uh, my horse cut right. I mean, Marcus Farler. That big ass, ugly ass hat. Now, I want you to know the only reason that I knew to do that is because Gracie tells me all the time. You got to. It's very unusual that I get to speak to people barefoot so, and without a jacket and tie. And usually before I stand up, someone says, will the defendant please rise? <laughs> I thought about um, preparing something and then I decided that I would just share with you some of my observations after having spent the last five days with um, all of you. And I really would like to tell you a few things that I've noticed. First, this is the, the broadest collection of people that I have ever been around, both from religion, ethnicity, color, you, you name it, culture. And yet, the, the, the air is as full of uh, as much love and affection uh, that I have ever experienced anywhere that I have ever been. And the pastor's ceremony was, was lovely, and he told us all a lot about love. But I was really surprised, because he left out the one saying about love that always sticks with me the most, and that is, Love is the one commodity that the more of it that you give away, the more of it that you have. And just hanging around with everyone here, some of you who I've never met before, and some of you who I've seen once or twice, and some of you who I know all about your lives from Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I was literally there when it, David, when Ava was born, I was at her birthday party. I was there when Christine's sister was training for her marathon run. And why do I know all of this? I never met David before today. But with Facebook, <laughs> I've been to every one of Femi's family reunions. <laughs> I've seen Steve when he gets a new pair of tight shorts that he didn't quite <laughs> adjust right. And I can say to Marcus, is that really Steve or is that a sock? <laughs> now, Marcus assures me it's really Steve, but I want to know how he knows. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Well, I'm immensely proud of both uh, uh, Marcus and uh, Susanna for many reasons, but also in the, in the following respect. It is absolutely amazing to me how uh, two people who at such a young age can have been so accomplished in their own endeavors. I mean, Marcus has, has built up a significant business enterprise, and Susanna has many years as a teacher and as a school psychologist, and the two of them bring together a level of success at such an early age that when I think in, in my own life where I was at this particular point in time, I was nowhere compared to them. It would never have been in my realm of uh, thinking to conceive that I might have 75 of my friends somewhere 
thousands of miles from home who actually cared enough about me to go out of their way to come to celebrate some event in my life. So, on a, on a very personal note, and, and this is the first time in uh, Marcus's life that I have been able to attend a meaningful function in his life ever from the time he was born. And it's unimportant as to the circumstances why, but think about it. Is this not the first time that I have been with you at a milestone point in your life and been able to share it with you? And I've, I've been trying not to think about it because when I do think about it, I, the throat sort of seizes up and, and I almost find it hard to speak because time is one of those things that no matter how uh, rich you may be, you never know how much you have and you can't buy any more than you're allotted. And I consider it such an overwhelming uh, blessing to be able to uh, be here on this day to uh, consecrate this moment with you. So on behalf of Gracie and myself, and also on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Lynn, and no one has said that, but I know in my heart that if there was any way on God's earth that the two of them could have been here today to also celebrate with us, they would have been here. So on their behalf too, I want to just welcome everyone and tell you what a marvelous day this is and how much happiness it brings to me. So Gracie and I wish you eternal happiness, eternal peace, and eternal contentment. We love you both. Okay, well, where do I start? I'm Susanna's sister, Esther, just in case I haven't met you yet. Um, when I first found out that Susanna and Marcus were getting married, I was like, finally, my baby sister is getting married. Then I was like, wait a second, finally is not quite the word. I thought about it, and it was more like deservingly, and I'll tell you why. Susanna grew up, she had a rough childhood. <laughs> being the last of four siblings, with the two before her both being boys, yeah. she got all <laughs> of Tyrone and Tyson's hand-me-downs. <laughs> she got their toys, their clothes, and like their kung fu haircuts. <laughs> it was just easier on my parents. <laughs> so then, <laughs> she's always had to prove herself in life. Oh, and another thing, being the last of the four of us to go to UT, the college fund was bone dry by the time it got to Susanna. <laughs> so she has really, really worked hard through her life and got jobs And when I never worked through high school. So she's always known what she's wanted. She knew how to get it and worked damn hard for it, including finding the man of her dreams. And if she had to wait a lifetime to find him, she would have. But luckily for all of us, she didn't have to. We didn't have to wait that long. Along came Marcus. Marcus is one of the sweetest, kindest, and generous hearted souls I've ever met. Marcus and Susie, you complete each other. And um, it was a tough journey, but you guys did it. And anything worth having isn't easy, okay? So, Marcus, I want to welcome you and your whole family on behalf of my parents that couldn't make it into our family. And I love your family. 
Okay, and we're gonna make one big happy family. And I want to um, also uh, wish you and Susie, your two beautiful children, Reagan and Tyler, and any other kids you wanna pop out, no pressure, okay, no pressure. Pure happiness and joy. And remember always, life is short. Embrace each other, inspire each other, and make each other a better person every day. Cheers, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. My name's Derek Margolis, and I'm Marcus's cousin. But uh, I'm gonna take a page out of Marcus's book because whenever he introduces me, he says, I'm his cousin, but I, it's more like his brother, and that's pretty much the same way I feel because Marcus is like a brother to me. And I'll tell you a little bit about how we met each other, actually, is that Marcus lived on the West Coast for the beginning of his life. So I didn't actually meet him until I was about eight years old. And he's three years older than me, so he was 11. And I have an older brother who's five years older than me. And over that eight years, I've grown a pretty strong distaste, distaste for him. And uh, there was a hatred for him. So. I thought I was going to get to meet Marcus for the first time and I get a new big brother, which was something to look forward to, right? So we met out in uh, Reno at Bally's with my grandmother and Marcus's mother and my mother and the whole family. And, uh, you know, I figured this is the time I'm going to get to say goodbye to my brother. But little did I know that it was going to be a tag team wrestling match with, you know, me as the lone little eight year old getting beaten up by two big brothers now. <laughs> So it was less than I asked for, but I had a new big brother. So luckily, Marcus was still on the West Coast, so I didn't have to have two big brothers for a while. So it was actually a long time before I get to see him again. But we'd see each other through the years. And it was about 2006 when I decided to move down to Houston. And at this point, we're all grown, so I didn't have to, you know, await all the, uh, the old shenanigans, you know, some new ones. And... I moved out and Marcus and I were reunited again and from that moment on it was just kind of full steam ahead into our relationship together and I can tell you one thing without divulging too much of the, uh, the things, my father's here, I don't want to say too much, but <laughs> let's just say that I would follow Marcus into anything, which is pretty much how it went down for the last seven years. But. Uh, Anyway, the one thing that I did follow him into is when he told me about Susanna for the first time. And it's funny because everybody hears about a new girl that someone met, but it's funny when you hear about the girl that you're about, that the person is about to marry, you know, years later. But the moment they meet them, you sit there and you listen to them and you, you know, you're like, wait a minute, is this, yeah, okay. And, <laughs> I don't want to say that I'm the smartest man in the room, but you know, if the shoe fits, so. <laughs> but I could tell, I could tell there was something up with this girl. It wasn't just someone at the gym <laughs> prancing on the treadmill. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> prancing around, yeah. So, I was happy to meet Susanna for the first time when Marcus brought her out. And it was funny because he was, he was very uncomfortable about it. But at the same time, you know, hey, there's my friend Susie. And, you know, hey, Susie. Yeah. And Susie did, <laughs> Susie did what she always did. She started analyzing everything that was going on. Who, does anyone know that Susie likes to analyze a lot of things? She's analyzing every one of you right now. Are they all having fun? Do you think if they were not in Cabo, they'd be having fun? Stuff like that. <laughs> so anyway, I was very happy to meet her. Because the one thing that I've noticed, and this is kind of a gauge for my family, is that you know my family is filled with extreme characters. And <laughs> I love them all. But if you can handle, if you can handle at least the first day of hanging out with my family, then there's a good chance you're in. And Susie's done it pretty well. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we didn't, we didn't need much of a litmus test. We, we figured, all right, she's in. We don't even care if Marcus likes her. Just We've all decided she's down. <laughs> anyway, so it, it, it brings me great pleasure because, you know, there, there's 
in life, there's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs, obviously. And um, the one thing that you know you hear a lot is that nobody's perfect, and you know that's that's an pretty important thing to think about because if nobody's perfect, then how are you going to find the other person? And the one thing I've been thinking about a lot is that if no one person is perfect, then what if two people could be perfect together? And that's what I think about when I see Marcus and Susanna because I just think that they are absolutely perfect together. And when you look at all the family members and friends that they brought together, you can't help to, to notice how perfect everything has been this past couple days and you know even going forward so anyway let's everyone just raise a glass and let's have one last wish for those two Marcus and Susie we love you enjoy